Okay, sir. I yield the mic to you, sir. So, can you see my screen now, sir? Yes, sir. We can, sir. Okay. So, let's uh, work with that. And then we can move on from there. So, good evening, everyone. I want to truly appreciate um, Legacy Lab for this uh, opportunity, especially Mr. Fermi. Thank you so very much for this opportunity. And for everyone that is joining us this evening, I also want to commend your, your making the decision to be part of this uh, meeting. And I hope that at the end of this meeting, we'll take home something very significant. And um, the reason why I chose this particular topic is because I know that quite a number of entrepreneurs are struggling with this. Quite a number of entrepreneurs are struggling with this. And over the years, you know, networking has been one of the strategies that I've used for my personal life and for also my businesses. I've leveraged on networking over and over and over again, you know. You can imagine when I decided to start uh, my real estate business, you know, even when I've not registered the business at all, you know, I was able to leverage on uh, the network of people around me and I raised a sizable amount of money running into millions just because I leveraged on the people around me. And to be honest, I leverage on someone who is not even my friend, but a friend to a friend of mine. So what you must understand as an entrepreneur, regardless of the industry where you find yourself, it is important that you know how to use uh, networking as a, sales, uh, as a sales tool. So we will try and understand this and how we can leverage on it subsequently for whatsoever we are doing and for whatsoever business uh, we are running. Now, if you look at that quote, in that quote, I said, uh, networking is not just connecting people. It is about connecting people with people people with ideas and people with opportunities. Notice that networking is not just about connecting people. It is about connecting people with ideas. It is about connecting people with opportunities. So what we are simply trying to say in essence is that there is a rule to networking. A lot of us, we see networking as old. Let me go to an event and quickly network and sell whatever product I have or whatever service I am uh, selling. In fact, over the years, people have perceived networking as just, oh, I have a product I want to sell. So I go to a conference or I go to a, an event and right there, I can start meeting people, collecting cards and selling my product. But if you ponder on this quote, he says networking is not about it's not just about connecting with people it is about connecting people with people watch that statement connecting people with people that is first and foremost it is not about what you want it is about knowing that oh how can i connect this person to the next person and then connecting people with ideas and then people with opportunity now let's try to define networking. Now what is uh, what is networking? Let's look at the word network first. Network it is the deliberate planning. The deliberate planning and action of interacting with others. The deliberate planning and action of interacting with others to exchange information and develop professional or social contact. Now, look at those 
uh, some words there. Deliberate means that it is intentional. It is something you must do intentionally. You know, and he said it requires planning and taking of action. It means that you have to plan it. It is not just about just saying, I'm going to an event. I want to go and network. You must plan the process and then take the necessary action in order to interact. He didn't say to sell. In order to interact, the, meaning that you want to exchange information with the person. That is the first goal of networking. You want to exchange information and then develop professional and social contact. You know, the, I'm sure most of us, we've heard this word before, that you are as rich as your network. You are as rich as people in your database. Take, for example, if you need to raise 1 million naira in less than uh, 12 hours, and you look through your phone, if you don't find five people, that you can immediately call and raise part or hold the money, then there's something wrong with the people that you have in your network. Networking is you developing your professional and social capital. Your social capital is very important. Now, what is sales? Sales simply means to exchange your skill or product or service for money. That's what sales mean, to exchange your skill, your product or service for money. So we say networking is meeting people. Sales is exchanging your product or service or your skill for money. And then what is a tool? A tool is a device or instrument. A tool is a device or instrument, especially one head in the hand, used to carry out a particular task. It makes tasks easier to be completed. Now, that is what two means. And if you look at what I have there, that's a hand uh, two. You understand me? It is a drilling machine. And that drilling machine, we use it to make holes, whether in wood or in concrete or whatever you want to make holes on. But what are we trying to say in essence? Look at that word. The two makes the job easier. It is a machine that makes the job easier. So if we are saying networking as a sales tool, we are simply saying networking makes selling easier. Selling can be difficult. Marketing can be difficult. But when you have the networking strategy, it makes it a lot, lot, lot easier. So we can conclude that we can leverage on networking to sell a skill, product, or service. Now, that is the beginning point. We can leverage on networking to sell a skill, product, or service. So in our conclusion, we are saying networking is meant to be used as a tool that will make selling easier, that will make whatever you want to achieve easier. So when you are an entrepreneur, you must know how to network. You must be an excellent networker. You must be an excellent uh, networker. Now let's look at five reasons why we network. Five reasons why we network. Five reasons why we network. We said number one, to become more relevant and visible. Does that sound like marketing? Yes. Marketing makes you visible. So networking is to make you become more relevant and more visible, more popular, more famous. That's what networking does to you. Networking, number two, we say, is to have influence and power. To have influence and power. To have influence and power. That is the second thing. People network majorly because they want to have influence, because they want to have power. When you have, when you have mastered how to network, you know, you have access to influence, you have access to power, you know. Then number three, to assess and leverage more resources and relationships. 
to assess and leverage more resources and relationship. That is the other reason why we also network, so that you can assess more resources and you can assess relationship. That's the reason why you are also networking. You know, like I mentioned earlier, I raised to a tone of close to 7 million when I've not even registered the business. I had capital as a resource to work with. So it's important that you understand that networking also give you the access or the leverage to resources and relationship. Then networking, it helps you to build partnerships and synergies. It helps you to build partnership and synergy. So when you're looking at networking, you are also looking at that area of how you can build a partnership and how you can build synergies when you network with people. You are not networking just because you have a product to sell. You are networking for partnership and for synergy. Synergies. I, I know some relationship that I had in my contact for close to years and we didn't do for years, we didn't do anything until recently. But I've nurtured that relationship, you know, because I know that it will become relevant somewhere in the future. In fact, I always tell people, I say, I'm not the kind of person that makes so much noise about what I do on social media. No, I don't do that. Not because I don't want to. I want to. But maybe because I'm not from the generation Z or the the late generation Y. So I, I, I don't think I have so much hold on all these social media and all those things. But I have to be honest with you. Networking is one of my own strategy for selling whatsoever I want to sell. Networking is one of my strategy for assessing whatsoever relationship or platform I want to assess. Lastly, we say to get things done to advance your career, your business, or social status. You network also so that you can get things done to advance your career, to advance your business, and to advance your social status. In fact, I have to be honest with you guys. In the last two years, I came to realize that whatever you want to achieve in this life, it is dependent on your social capital. Whatsoever that you want to achieve in this life, it is dependent and subject to your social capital. And how do you build your social capital? Networking. That is how you build your social capital. Now, let's look at the steps to networking. Steps to networking. Steps to networking. Number one, if you want to network, you must clearly define your networking goals. Whether it's a goal or goals, you must clearly define it. Why do I want to network? You must clearly define the reason why you intend to network. First, determine what you would like to achieve through your network. It's important that you determine that. What do I intend to achieve through my networking efforts? What do I have in mind? What do I want to achieve? Is it for career advancement? Is it for business growth? Is it for fundraising? Is it for status symbol? What do we mean by status symbol? Your social capital person of influence, person of power? Is it for spiritual growth? Is it for marriage bliss? Is it for friendship? You can network for virtually anything you can think of. So the first thing you must do is to clearly define your networking goal. You know, I always say this, anytime I intend to start uh, any business, I'm a serial entrepreneur, so anytime I intend to start any business, the first thing I do is I check my network. Who are the people in my network that I can leverage on? And the truth, I see the opportunity also in everything. 
you know, like um, last week, me and one of my business associates, we went to make inquiry as regarding the particular property that we intend to that we intend to buy up. And we got to the place, we saw that the property has been marked by the by the court. And so we started making inquiry. And we couldn't get inquiry. And I told uh, that my partner, I said, see, let's go to these security people guiding the street. You'll be surprised the information these guys have. So I went to the security people. I sat with them. I started gisting with them. And I asked them, that property that they marked, who owns that property? You can't imagine the truckloads of information that these people delivered on my table. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, you can't imagine, sorry for that, it's just one of my, you can't imagine the truckload of information that they gave to me. The truckload was information was something else, you know? And they eventually told me that the landlord stays within that, uh, estate and they pointed the landlord house to me i mean the chairman of the street rather sorry they said the chairman of the street stay in that estate so i went i made inquiry i happened to see or had a meeting with the chairman and in the meeting with the chairman after we were done and we were leaving i just told the chairman i said it is an honor meeting you i appreciate you for the wealth of information and wisdom that you have shared with us this uh, evening if you don't mind sir i would like to see you again and so the man said why not i'm free and when i was leaving i asked my my colleague i said what do you think he said i don't know since they said they are not selling the house again the man has told us they are not selling the house so we move on to somewhere else i said can you imagine i said for me, we have just spoken to another potential investor. I said, so we're going back to the office. We're going to come up with a proposal and we're going to have a meeting with this man again and push to him one of the, the real estate uh, investments that we are looking into. And that was what I did earlier today. I met with the man. We submitted the proposal to him. The man looked at it, he went through it, he said, wow, this is interesting. Just give me time for me to discuss it with my, with my lawyer. And the interesting thing, he said, Fred, I'm going to, to the club where I hang out with my friends now. Would you mind coming with me? You know, In that club, I met two, three other people who may obviously become or be added to my social capital. And that's what you must understand. You must clearly define your networking goal. Then number two, number two, once you define your networking goal, you must reassess your current network. Every one of us, we have a current network. Open your phone book, open your uh, directory. You have people in your contact. You want to submit a proposal to a particular financial institution, you will be shocked that you have somebody in your contact who works in that financial institution, but you have not paid attention to that person. There's somebody there who works there that if you talk to the person, like I said, if you read that word, as I said, open your directory book, database or contact on your phone, and then categorize the people you have on your network according to research. You are three to five people away from the person you are looking for. You are three to five people away from the person that you are looking for. So what am I trying to say in essence? If anybody is listening to me right now and you want to meet with the most powerful man in this country, perhaps as we know, our president to be, that is always the most powerful person in a particular country and you want to meet with him someday, you are just three to five persons away from the person. Take for example, for me, I know an honorable. I know the honorable who knows 
Bajabia Amila. I'm just saying, Bajabia Amila have access to the president. Me, personally, I know Bajabia Amila directly. Bajabia Amila directly have access to the president. I don't know if you understand me. So that's how it works. You are just three to five people away from the person that you want to connect with. So, you know, I can't remember the last time that I said, oh, I want to send particular proposal to this organization. No, 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 no. I always tell my team, find someone who works in that organization. If you have to go on LinkedIn, go on LinkedIn. If you have to go on Facebook, go on Facebook. We need someone in that organization who works in that organization. Check your LinkedIn contact. There's someone who is connected to somebody who works in that organization. And that's what we do. When we get someone who is connected to that person, we'll reach out to that someone that we know. And then that someone that we know might probably help us book a meeting to meet the person we are looking for. So the first, the second step you take is that you reassess your current network. You have people, you have database. Don't tell yourself you don't have. I have to be honest with you. You know, you can't imagine or if you really, really look at your network, you realize that even a cleaner in an organization can be an open door to the CEO of that organization. That's the way it works. Takes my, take my organization, for example. You know, anybody who know any of my staff obviously can have access to me. Nothing serious. You understand me? That is how it works. Check your current network. Then number three, have a networking plan. Review your networking plan. Look back at your networking goals. Giving these goals, identify three people currently outside your network whom it will be helpful to have in your network. List their names and organization. You know, if, for example, you want to raise funds, list three people that you feel you need for you to raise that fund. Now, list out their name, list out their organization, then come up with who are the people that you perceive can know these people. Who are the people that you perceive can know these people? You know, this particular networking strategy, I, I learned it some years back when one of my friends just called me out of the blue one day and he said, Alfred, please, we, we want to shoot an advert for a particular product, a particular brand. He said, we want to get RMD. And I'm like, you want to get RMD? Why don't you find a way to know where you can reach RMD in his office or wherever? He said, no, I know your wife is a film producer. So let your wife, if she can help us get RMD. And it was like a light bulb in my head. I said, it's true. And I spoke to my wife that, oh, I have a friend. They are looking for RMD. And my wife said, oh, I don't have direct contact of RMD. But let me speak to Uche Jumbo. And she spoke to Uche Jumbo. And Uche Jumbo spoke to RMD. And the rest is history. That's how it works. So whatever you want to achieve, at least look at your current contact. Three people that you know that is within your network or three people outside your network that you want to reach and then look at your network. Who are the people that I can reach out to that we know these people? That's the strategy. Can you also put against their name where you will find and meet with them? Identify how you are going to reach out to them and when. For example, I remember there was a particular CEO I wanted to reach. I can't remember the name now. You know, I've been, I've wrote to the, to the office. I've visited the office. It was becoming challenging for me to reach that particular CEO until it came like a light bulb one day. I was strolling through his Facebook page and I saw the wife in a particular church. And so I, I started asking around. I said, this woman, does she attend this church? And they said, yes. And luckily, 
I went to that church. I met her in the children's church. She was a children's teacher in that church. And I spoke to her, Madam, I've been trying to meet Oga and we, we related and all that. Although somebody connected me to her in that church also. And we talked. And she simply just told me, she said, Alfred, just come to the house on Saturday, 5 p.m. I'll get him ready with him for you. And I went to their house on Saturday, 5 p.m. And there, the man I've been trying to meet, sitting by the poolside on a Saturday evening. And I met with him. And he said, oh, I have not even seen any of your letters that you have been sending. So you can imagine what some people can do in a place of work. So you must have your networking plan, how you intend to achieve it. Then, Number four, decide what to give. You must decide what to give. Number four, you decide what to give. Beside each person's name, not a useful or interesting thing you could offer or share with the person. For example, information about a project or job placement. Don't go to people you need favor from empty and dead. Don't go to people that are of status symbol that you want to meet and believe that, oh, if I give them my card, they will have something to do with me. I always say this. The people at the upper side of the ladder, the, the very rich, they, they don't buy anything because they want to buy. They buy simply because of trust. So if they don't get to trust you, they can buy from you. You can meet them in a training they will collect your cards. They will give you their phone number. But I can guarantee you, they will never call you. Even when you call them, they will hardly pick your call. Why? Because they only communicate to value. They only get attracted to value. So if you are deciding the people you are going to meet, also list what you are going to offer. What do you have to offer them? I'm not saying what you want to sell to them. So it means that if I want to meet, say, for example, Tony Elumelu, I need to do a research to know what interests Tony Elumelu. I must know what will interest him, what will be of interest to him, what will bring his passion and this invigorating attention that he will want to say, oh, I want to be with this person or I want to have a chat with this person. I'm just saying, take somebody like Tony Elumelu. He's doing a lot of entrepreneurship program and all that. So if I have information that will benefit the Tony Elumelu Foundation somehow, he will be ready to listen. I was still talking to someone today. I said, listen, if you need to meet that woman you are talking about, go and sit down and ask yourself, what is the value that I can communicate or give to this woman that will make her give me her attention. It's important. Two days ago, I was talking to one of my colleagues in the industry, and he said, oh, I went to this person, and the person said, uh, instead of what I brought to the person, the person wants me to be part of a, a particular project. He said, Fred, I'm not cut out for that. I said, you are making a mistake. Be part of the particular project. Do all you can to make sure that project works. And what you are looking for will be sorted. It's as simple as that. These people want something back for whatever they are giving out to you. So if it is your time, if it is their time you want, if it is something you want from them, you must have something that you are giving back to them. And that is the first thing you communicate to them. That is the first offer you give to them. When I go on LinkedIn and I want to meet someone, I have done a thorough research about the person. When I'm sending an email to the person to connect with the person, I'm discussing what I feel will be of interest to the person. And you'll be sure. 99% of the time, if I send out such email, I always get reply. I always get reply. I remember when I wanted to meet this particular novelist, uh, Seviata, her name is Seviata. When I wanted to meet her, you know, I watched one particular film that was produced by Kunle Afolayon that was 
adapted from one of our book. And I wrote a review about that film. So it was the review that I attached to my email. I sent that email and I said, oh, dear Selfie, I intend to meet with you, blah, 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 blah. I watch your film. Blah, blah. I know that a lot of Nigeria will not understand uh, this film, but I've done a review. About that. And I sent the review to her. When she read the review, she said, wow, this is the first time I'm getting a Nigerian write such a review concerning the, my works. And that was the opportunity for me to meet with her. You must communicate value. You must offer them something so that they can offer you whatsoever you are looking for in return. It's a win-win situation. I will use this phrase by the Godfather in this film, Godfather. He said, give them an offer that they cannot refuse. From the day I hear that phrase in that film, I always think in my head, what is the offer I can give to this person that the person cannot refuse? Refuse. You understand me? So if you're networking, you must have something that you are offering. Then lastly, take action. Take action. Take action. The difference between those who achieve their goals and those who don't is simply action. You know, not that when we discuss networking like this, if we are done with these, go online. Start with maybe LinkedIn, for example. The world is a global village now. Everything we have discussed, look at it all over again. Experiment. Get somebody almost immediately, like tonight. Oh, I want to connect with this person. Do a brief of research about that person. Compose a, a mail for that person. I send the mail to the person. Take action. Take action. It's important. That is what you need to do. I know we don't have much time, and that's the few I'm able to put together for this uh, section. Hopefully, questions and answer can help us to get more information. I hope I'm good at this point. Oh, wow. <laughs> Of course, I, I I I knew it was going to be a lot of experience, and uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. I personally have learned a lot today, and um, and uh, I think uh, I will make use of of the last part, which is I shouldn't stop at just being a uh, era, but also a doer. I'm coming to your inbox very soon on, on another project, sir. And uh, thank you very much. And unfortunately, uh, uh, I don't think we might be able to take. Uh, I don't know. I've been trying. I've been trying to check it out. Um, if people can unmute, I don't know if they can. But okay. You can raise your hand if you have a question. I just did that one there so that I can, can look at the way to get you to talk. So please, if you have questions, please raise up your hand. We're going through is not seeing hands. Just give me like a minute. I really want to address something in my front desk. Okay, okay. No problem, yeah, sir. Just a minute, uh, I'll okay. be right back. Okay, sir. Um, okay, people are not even raising up their hands for questions. So, uh, in the absence of um, any question, it's been, um, it's been an insightful one. And um, we, we have dropped the, okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I can see hands open up now. And blah, uh, blah, we just have to make everybody collaborators. Please just keep accepting. <laughs> if you want to talk, just be a collaborator. We made a little, uh, well, we made a try and error by, by error and. Uh, it affected 
people who have been able to contribute without being a collaborator. So, uh, can you hear me? Good evening. Yes, I can hear you. Um, just a minute, let's miss. I, I don't know if Mr. Alfred is hearing us, but we're not seeing him. If they can hear us, then the question is going to go. But if it's not, then just, uh, just wait a minute so that he can be able to give an answer to your question. Okay. And um, well, um, if you find the um, webinar insightful, interesting, we'll drop the link for feedback. And um, there are two things about the feedback. The first thing is for us to have you on our database uh, because we're currently working on some other initiatives. Uh, one of it is um, the digital footprint initiative, which um, we're planning to support business owners on establishing and optimizing their online presence. So, um, and we'll be rolling out um, some forms of newsletters, you know, to inform people to call to actions and whatnot. So when we have you on our database, it's easier for us to be able to communicate with you. So please do well to fill up the survey, uh, which I just shared the um, link and the message session. So Mr. Patrick is back and, I'm ready to take your message, um, your question, um, Shizi. Hi, Mr. Alfred. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Hi, Femi. Good evening to you too. Um, yeah, first, yeah. I'm going to say thank you for uh, coming up with this webinar. Thank you for bringing it up because it's something that I know I've always needed. So um, I, I joined a bit late, but believe me when I tell you this was really insightful and I learned a lot from it. Thank you so much, Femi, for the invitation. Mr. Alfred, I want to also tell you thank you for the lecture. Majorly, um, I work as marketing manager to a hospitality organization, and I've always been in the media stroke advertising industry. So coming into hospitality is a new thing entirely for me. I've always had issues with meeting with clients. I've always... Um, found it difficult for people to take me seriously so it's easy to say okay i'm a marketing manager i just want to get out of the house uh, take my proposals with me walk up to any office and knock on the door and exactly what you said about letters not reaching certain people is what has been happening they don't even deliver the letters at all so it's like i'm just wasting my effort so working on um contacts networking is a major thing that um, I believe that we can all key into to use in reaching out to our intended clients. However, um, I also know that it might be difficult for me to reach out to a friend who knows a friend who knows a friend. People are quite skeptical about revealing information about people that they know that can help us. So how do we now appeal to their better judgment or to their better minds to please help us and give out contact so that we can reach out to those who can help us. Okay, uh, fantastic. Now, first and foremost, you must understand that people will only respond to you when they trust you. Trust issue is what we have, especially in Nigeria, because people, um, People are afraid to release what they have, and then someone goes there, mess up probably a relationship that somebody has nurtured over the years. That has been mm -hmm. one of the challenges. So now, like I said, we, we, we don't have enough time for me to be able to really, really open up this boss. I've been leveraging on this for over 19 years you can look for me on social media i'm not an active person on social media and i can also guarantee you in my business i'm not doing badly you know because i've mm. leveraged on network around me now 
I don't know if you are familiar with what they call network marketing. I am not, sir. To be honest with you, I'm not. Uh -huh. Now, the network marketing, it, it works with what we call pyramid scheme. When they want to sell a product, they tell you, bring two people that you know can buy this product. Have you heard something like that before? Oh, yes, with affiliate marketing. Yes, thank you. Now, they said, bring two people that you perceive can buy this product. Now, they are not telling you to go and look for strangers. They are telling you, within your network, you have two people that you have influence over. And we mm -hmm. need you to bring those two people to buy this product. Now, that is actually what we call the networking strategy. Now, okay. if I want to reach, for example, let's say, um, let's say, for example, I want to reach um, Ibukun Awoshika. Okay. Now, and I don't have the contact of Ibukun Awoshika. And I have, like, your product that you want to sell to somebody like Ibukun Awoshika. Now, the first thing I will do is, who are the people in my network that I can go and have a discussion with? Take, for example, if I have a, a friend of mine that I know, his name is Kenny Akintobi, and this guy is an HR consultant. He knows lots of people, and he knows lots of people in the HR industry. industry. Mm. And I go to Kenny, I say, oh, Kenny, you don't mind, I want to have a a lunch with you and we sit for a lunch and i discuss with him my intention showing the things that i want to introduce do you per chance know ibuko awoshika if he says he doesn't know do ibuko awoshika do you per chance know someone who knows ibuko mm -hmm. awoshika now can you help me put a word through to that person and say oh one of my friend is coming to meet with you to discuss with you something that may interest you, that may be exciting to you. I don't know if you're mm -hmm. getting my point. I do get it your is, point. Uh, that is the work there. It is the plan. There is a lot of work. It's not just going to happen overnight. You understand me? If you meet the yeah. other person now, that second person will be will give you that attention, not because you deserve it, but because you are coming from somebody he or she respects. Hmm. You understand me? Oh, yes. oh, this person is coming from Kennedy. So the same respect he has for Kenny, that's the respect he will give to you. And hmm. what Kenny has opened up to you or to me at that moment is an opportunity to network with somebody else. Now, the ah. person is also I'm having a meeting with right now, I will be, and I need to discuss with the person also. You know, if I'm meeting you, it's not just, oh, I have this thing I want to introduce to Ibuko and Wushika. No, 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 no. First, I need to find a common ground where me and that person can have a common interest. That's why I can discuss sports, I can discuss football, I can discuss family, and I'm looking out psychologically. I'm looking out for what interests this person, what brings that... Uh, spark in that person's face the smile the laugh you understand oh, me yes, the moment I, I get that i know that okay this is where me and this person have similarity you know okay. and i will lay more emphasis on that and then when i know that oh i've gained a certain level of trust from this person i can now open up the reason why i spoke to kenny to have a meeting with you is because I have this fantastic thing that I think I want to show Ibukun Awoshika. And he told me that you work in, in an organization. I don't mind if it is possible for you to link me up with either the PA or directly with Ibukun Awoshika, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And you'll be sure. You understand me? Yes, I do. You'll be sure I do, how sir. the person will open up. We do that every day unconsciously, but we don't know. <laughs> we do that every day. You know, each time you probably make a particular kind of air style and a friend asks you, where did you make this air? You just say, oh, I made it somewhere, somewhere there. 
Ah, let me give you the person contact. Just tell the person that it's from me. Uh -huh. You understand me? Yes, and I do. And the person goes to the saloon and say, oh, my friend, Oluwa CG told me that uh, uh, you are the one that made this ahead. Shows the person there. And before you know it, you even realize that that person become closer than your air maker than you yourself. True. True, sir. <laughs> True. Thank you very much. I appreciate this, sir. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you, sir. We have one more question to go. Ezekiel, please finish with your question um, so that we can wrap up. Mr. Alfred is a very busy man. I'm sure he has other engagements. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Ezekiel. Thank you very much for the lecture. It's been uh, an eye opener. Uh, so, I was wondering, so just a question, I was wondering if it is possible to get the um, slides that you used in the presentation. That's number one. Then number two, for somebody who obviously is um, low on resources, I mean financially and uh, somebody who is low on resources, yes. Um, I'm starting out a company and it's capital intensive. It's a fintech, which requires a whole lot of networking, like you said. So I'm, I'm from the um, lower part of the society. So how do you advise that I, because I have people in my network uh, who are not so, but they do well in their various fields. But no one is as rich and powerful as I would want them to be enough to help the brand and um, financially if I want them to. So, what advice would you give somebody like me, climbing up to the people in the upper side of the ladder, like you said, to get them to support um, someone like me on the lower side of the ladder, bearing in mind that I don't have. Um, that sort of contact of network that you talked about in your presentation. But the network I have is obviously people slightly above my level, but not like the ones that you've been mentioning. So those are my two questions. Okay, thank you. So I'll share the slide with Mr. Femi, and then Mr. Femi can share with everyone. I think that's, that's fine that way. Then uh, Mr. Ezekiel, now, you know, I always say this, people's terminology, people's terminology, help me define them. You understand me? You know, you've made some terminology and I believe you have defeated yourself even before starting. You understand me? What are the terminologies? Number one, you have a business that is capital intensive. Now, I always say this as an entrepreneur, if you cannot make money from nothing, then you are not called to be an entrepreneur. That is the first rule of entrepreneurship, ability for you to make money from nothing. So it is something you need to give a thought over and over again. It's not going to happen easily, but as an entrepreneur, you must teach yourself. It's a learnable skill how to make money from nothing. That's the first thing. So that's one of the terminology you have to deal with. There is no business that is too capital intensive and there is no business that you can start with zero capital. Maybe you are looking at the larger picture. You have not taken time to break it down to the simplest one that you need to start. You don't need to start a FinTech almost immediately. You can gradually start something that puts money in your pocket that you can leverage on and then you can have access to at least a sizable amount of resources that can help you build the fintech gradually you understand me that's number one you must uh, you must be somebody who can start uh, any business with zero naira and then you start from wherever you are that's number one. I may not be able to emphasize more on that. 
Number two, your terminology. You also said, oh, you do you are from the lower level. You are the one defining yourself. I'm seeing you right here. I don't know where you are from. I don't know who you are. I don't know whether you have 200 million in your bank account. I don't know whether all you have is just 2,000 naira in your bank account. Life and business is about perception. You understand me? And it is about how you think in your mind. You don't want to know where I started from. You don't want to know. I am sure if you know a glimpse of where I started from, you will know that you have a lot of edge over somebody like me. You understand me? But there is something about me when I started off in life. I knew I could get whatsoever I want to get in life. Nothing can stop me. In fact, when I started going to look for somebody like Lulu Akiwomi, the CEO of Prima Garnet, I was just 16 into 17. And I told myself I want to have a TV show. And all my friends in my neighborhood were saying, how would you say you want to have a TV show? Are you mad? It's rich people that won't have TV shows. Why do you want to have a TV show? Your parents cannot even afford to pay your school fees. And then you want to have a TV show. I told them I want to have a TV show. And I remember doing a proposal. That proposal must have been very horrible. And I went looking for, I saw in a magazine, I can still remember the name of the magazine, Green Pastors Magazine. I read about Lulu Akiwumi and I saw his office contact there and I did a proposal and I moved. How I even got money to get to the office, I can't remember. But I knew it took me like almost two to three weeks, three months rather, two to three months for me to eventually sit in front of Lulu Akiwumi because every time I get to the gate, the gate man will ask me, do you have an appointment? I will say no. I didn't know the meaning of do you have an appointment. I didn't know you had to book an appointment. And the gate man will say, you can't go in. And I will turn back. I will go back another time. And I kept on going until one day, I met somebody there and the gate man asked the person, do you have an appointment? And the person said, yes. So when the gate man asked me, do you have an appointment? I said, yes. 17, I'm telling you. And I went through. I got to the reception. Do you have an appointment? I said, I didn't even know the meaning of what they mean by do you have an appointment? I said, yes. They told me, they ushered me to a second reception and the personal assistant came to meet me and said, do you have an appointment with Mr. Lulu Akim? I said, yes. He said, what time is your appointment? I said, no, he didn't give me time. And the lady laughed. But you were saying you have an appointment. I said, I didn't know. I thought it was the code for one to enter through the gate. She laughed. And looking at me, 17 years old, she placed me in front of Mr. Lulu Akiwum. You understand me? Why? Because I believed I can assess him. There is nobody you cannot assess. You don't have to know the person. You just have to know someone. That's why I said the people that you said are in your network. I am sure they work in corporate organizations in different industries. You have people like that. If we don't have people like that, you have they have people like that. Even your brother, your siblings, they they work in some places that these are the people you want to reach out to. I don't know if you're getting my point. So you must zero your mind, identify what do you need. For example, if you intend to start a fintech. That's a story for another day. We have organizations here in Nigeria where they finance projects like that. If your project is good enough, they'll finance it. We have lots of them. You can do research about them. You can Google somebody like uh, Larry Messon. Larry Messon is the CEO of, um, of um, First Founders. He's the CEO of First Founders. They finance businesses like that. Uh, Oxygen by um, um, Olawale of Landway. They finance projects like that. We have Spark. I, I can't remember whether it's still Spark or he has changed the name by Jason Njoku. They finance businesses like that. You can look for 
incubators and um, um, what do they call them again? Incubators and one other name. I can't remember now that they call them. They have them. Don't defeat yourself before you start. You know, start looking for someone who knows somebody who have access to the money. As I'm talking to you, I'm being honest. I'm trying to raise 5 billion Naira before the end of this year. And that is why I said, the person I went to meet today is one of the people. I don't know him from Vietnam, but I just perceive this man, what he told me or what he has shared with me. This man has this kind of money. If he doesn't have this kind of money, he has people who has this who have this kind of money with them. So what do I want to do? Link with him. And you can imagine he offered to take me to his club. And I met two, three other people in the club. You understand me? I got back to the office. Those two, three other people that I met in the club, I sent them messages. Oh, it was wonderful meeting you in the club. You know, nice knowing somebody like you. I would want to know the kind of business you do and see how I can offer help in whatever area that your business would need. You know, and one of them actually replied me. You know, that's how you build network. You don't have to know the people. So don't defeat yourself in your mind before you start. You know, know what you want and go out for it. That's the way it works in life and in business. I don't know if I'm able to answer your question. Mr. Fermi, are you there? Mr. Ezekiel, yes, I hope I'm able to answer your question. Yes. Uh, yes, you are oh, okay. able to uh, it, but, uh, just a, just an observation. It's not a defeatist mindset. It was um, some of the, maybe came across wrong. No, Ezekiel, you don't have to tell me the mindset. You know, I, I said something earlier. I said I listen to your terminologies. It's your terminologies that tells me who you are. You don't have to tell me, and that's how successful people or business people that's how they assess you it's your terminology you have some terminologies that you are using and when you use those terminology it tells me who you are so uh, we have uh, i've dropped uh, mr Alfred ando on twitter and instagram so you can follow him for uh, he loves the youth i can assure you that he loves passionate entrepreneurs. I've been on that institute several and yes, I can tell you that uh, he has an open hand to, you know, to listen to you and to mentor you further. So uh, without much ado, thank you everyone. Um, this series is a monthly one. And like I said, please do want to fill up the survey, especially for those who joined via various other means that we reached out through so that we can capture you on our database and be able to reach out to you um, on our subsequent ones. So thank you very much, Mr. Alfred, and um, thank you, everyone. We'll see you at our next webinar. Thank you, Bye. Mr. Fremi. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Gigi. Oh, she just left. Thank you, my boss. Thank you, Titi. Thank you, Ezekiel. We see at our forum.